Hello there, Mr. K here, the mediocre painter, and I do YouTube videos to get you into the wargaming hobby because I've made the mistakes so you don't have to. So today I'm going to talk about the Caradron Overlords Battle Tome update and talk about the changes that that's made to the Caradron Overlords, where it's better, where it's worse, but overall, generally, this Battle Tome update achieves a great many things. It makes the Caradron Overlords feel much more like they should be. It also makes collecting them easier and less expensive and it makes them more competitive. So overall it's a bit of a win but it is a very significant change. So let's talk about the way Caradron Overlords were being played previously to this battle time update. Generally speaking, you'd have a large unit of Arcanaut company with the maximum number of Skyhooks that you could have in there because you could take either three Skyhooks or three Skyplikes or three volley guns per 10 models and basically that's what you would take and those things were like range 24, D3 damage, they were pretty mean nasty and if you stuck an aether chemist with them they would get basically two shots by that given weapon so you'd have 40 arcanauts with 12 sky pikes kicking out 24 shots with not close you know a pretty long range so you know combined with some command abilities you could almost click and delete units uh, by using that kind of ability but it didn't really feel very Caradron Overlordsy because it kind of didn't really favour the ships, the clown cars as they're so you know as they get called. And also, and this happens I think with a lot of the factions, there ends up being certain factions, you know, within this in case of the Caradron Overlords, that Skyport, they're the ones that get played in competitive play and that sort of cascades on down even to sort of um, you know just casual play as well so Barak Zilfin was played a lot because they're the city whereby you can just you could drop a, um, a sky vessel kind of anywhere at the beginning of the round and just cause all kinds of hassle absolutely uh, great if you're taking like a big ironclad and you just drop it and cause all, all kinds of trouble but also I think the other one you know, Barak Urbas would have been played a, a, as well significantly because of the boosts you got to the Aether Chemists with them. I mean, they could basically, you know, of course, um, support two units at a time rather than just the one. And um, the other one that probably got played um, quite a bit as well was Mornar. Uh, Barak Mornar got played quite a bit because they had a rule that enabled them in the first round to basically run and shoot so you could if you were into alpha strikes that was a, a pretty useful capability those extremes have kind of been evened out a little bit in the way that the rules have been changed and now if you look at the different um, cities that you can pick the skyports you can pick it's quite a bit flatter and very becomes kind of and this is kind of, I feel, how you'd want it to play, a horses for courses situation. So if we look at our different skyports now, they've each <clears throat> got their merits, and I could definitely see scenarios, even with I mean, competitive play, whereby you might switch the skyport depending on who you are going against, and ultimately, I feel, that's what you want to be able to deliver from a set of rule changes. So if you look at the Barak Nar rule changes, this is your magic dispelling company, uh, sorry, Skyport. And I can definitely see you wanting to take that if you were going against an army with a Nagash in or a Zinch army, you know, a magic heavy army. Barak Nar is probably what you're gonna go for. That makes a lot of sense because the extra benefits you get by being with Barak Nar, like, you know, at the start of the first battle, roll, roll a dice for each friendly Barak Nar hero on the battlefield, and you get 
more command points basically on a four plus well who doesn't like command points and the way that works uh, with you know barrack nar as well especially if you had an admiral you're just you know churning out command points like crazy um each barrack nar hero can attempt to unbind a, a spell on the hero phase so that, you know if you're taking typically you probably take three or four heroes in a card and overlords um i mean then you know you're looking at you know serious amounts of capability in terms of unbinding which is not something you get out of the box really with a dwarf army because normally you don't get any sort of magical capabilities much at all sorry duarding as they're called now so there's barrett now that's kind of our magic dispelling skyport and then if we have a look at zilfin the windswept city these have probably got a little bit of a nerf really because the way the rules have changed around the clown cars, you know, you can now fly, do something called fly high, which basically means they can just disappear off the battlefield when you move them and then appear within nine inches of your opponent and basically blow blow them to kingdom come. Now you can't drop units out of them when you do that, you can just shoot, but still very, very powerful ability and kind of means that you're directing your Caradrome Lord's army more towards garrisoning garrisoning your troops inside of these ships because that's the other another significant rule change now when you go out your dudes are in the ships they're garrisoned and you get the garrison rule so what does that mean well it's not often used in age of sigma and they really you know just use that rule here and that means they're minus one to, to hit in there and they get a plus one save so it makes them much more durable as well so you've just made it's much more useful for you to actually use the cars to move your guys around. They basically can become mobile, you know, gun platforms. And even with ten Arcanauts company in there, you know, your frigate, for example, becomes just a much better proposition in terms of you know its ability to actually survive and for an additional ninety points. Why wouldn't you do that? So. That's kind of you know one of the ways that it's changed. So if we go through some of the other sky ports, we talk about Zilfin. You know, Zilfin has a similar sort of you know amendment as before. You know, it's got the ability to drop a guy at the beginning of a round. Now you've got this fly high ability. It's like uh, well, they've kind of all of all gotten that. Um, they do have um, a nice command point trait here going on with master commander if this general is part of your army on the battlefield each time you spend a command point to use a command ability on this general's wall scroll you roll a dice on a five plus you've seen one extra command point so if you have an admiral you get that so this is a you know good you know command point generating list generally speaking the artifact of power that you're forced to take isn't all that marvelous so here you've got a staff of ocular optimization pick one of the bearers missile weapons and add one to hit rolls so that attack to make that weapon so there are compromises that you make when you take um these um sky ports so i but i think it's going to be rare that you don't do that because the benefits outweigh the fact that you get maybe a poor artifact to be perfectly honest or a poor command trait <clears throat> it's not really true that you'd get both <clears throat> so if you look at barrack zon the city of the sun these guys basically just stick around forever so it makes um, <clears throat> your sky wardens you know and your endrin riggers you know really really good and that's one of the nice things um, about this particular um skyport you actually now can actually play uh, carol and Owens with some melee capability if you take this um, skyport. So moving on to the next uh, skyport after what have we just done? We just did Barrack Zon. We've got Barrack Urbaz, the market city, which I think is one of the ones that people are going to play a lot in competitive play. So they've developed a rule for the Carriage Run Overlords now around um, Aether Gold. And it kind of similar to, I guess, Urgold for the Fire Slayers. And basically enables them to uh, use a Triumph um, when they're in play. So if the unit is a, ten, a character or 10 models, they basically get 
one Urgold, and they can use that Urgold to use a triumph to basically re-roll wounds, re-roll hits, re-roll saves. Um, and once use that, well, once per battle, um, assuming they have uh, actually Urgold to spend. And there are ways, this particular Skyport actually is all about uh, the Aether Gold because they can actually generate some more basically from their abilities but also they don't suffer any penalties because there is actually pen penalties for using the Aether Gold you get minus one bravery so if you have a unit that actually uses it that has say two uh, gold two, two, two Aether Gold sorry not Aether Gold two Aether Gold and um, basically uses that then it's going to be minus two bravery so you know that's not so great so the Barak Urbaz kind of counteracts that and um, also their command trait is you know specific to a chemist and basically you can re-roll they nerf the chemist a bit right so the chemist used to be you get an additional attack for a particular type of weapon if the chemist was nearby now basically you get to re-roll wounds and basically the aether chemist ability here basically means that you can get two units to have that ability not just one um, but you don't need to take an aether chemist as a commander of course so that's actually beneficial because you can pick and choose what you want because there are better artifacts i think for a uh, sorry better things to pick from the command traits list and the great end dream work is breath of morgrim which is in your shooting phase you can pick one enemy unit and roll one dice for each model from that unit within six inches of the bearer for each six that unit suffers mortal wound now this army is not a mortal wound generating army it's probably one of the things that the caradron overlords really lack so having that on a uh, frigate which is pretty hard to get rid of or even an ironclad but i think there's better traits on the ironclad um, having that on a frigate in particular, because the frigate does not have gr good great end room works in my opinion, is really useful because you stick an end room master inside of that frigate so you can heal wound three wounds each time, plus put some Grunstock Thunderers in there and you've basically got a pretty mean um, behemoth that can survive quite a long time and cause quite a lot of hurt to units um, even in melee and that's always been the weak point of this particular army so i think urbaz is going to be the one that you'll see a lot of people play and that's probably the one i would play um, to be perfectly honest we then got mordor the city of shadow these got a bit of a, a a bit of a nerf to be perfectly honest they still get the opportunistic privateers um command trait which you know was basically a a move and a shoot move so run and a shoot but that doesn't you don't have that anymore so now it's basically yes this general is part of a garrison of a sky vessel that is on the battlefield after armies are set up and the first battle round begins you can remove the sky vessel from the battle and set it up again more than nine inches away from enemy units and if you do that you cannot make a normal move the first battle round so it's it's not they're not quite as good as they used to be we've got a footnote here well, who strikes first right hardest once per battle at the start of your combat phase you can pick one friendly battle morning a unit that is within three inches of the enemy and then you fight fights again and um, seek new prospects you can reroll battle shot tests prosecute wars with all haste in your first turn barrack monarch units can run and still shoot later in the turn so they've still got that particular ability so they are pretty good. They've got Fearsome Raiders as well, which is minus one from Bravery from the character uh, for enemies within six. So they, there's merit here. And so I think all of the Skyports have merit for different circumstances. The artifact of power that you have to take here, you must be the Gale Force Stave. And at the start of the enemy charge phase, you can pick one enemy unit within 12 inches of the bearer and halve the charge rolls. Not bad. Not brilliant, but not bad. <coughs> you then have Barrett Thring, Sit of the Ancestors. And I think on these guys, 
they've missed a little bit of a trick. Now, I think they could have made these slightly more interesting, but basically they're kind of the more traditionalists. So what they've done here is make it so that you can take um, other Duardin units and they get the um, keyword of the Skyport. So the abilities that they have is incredibly stubborn. If a Skyfarer's unit model is slain in melee, basically within three inches, roll a dice on a four plus the model can fight before it's removed from play. The code, Chronicle of Grudges, after armies are set up before the battle round begins, pick up to three different enemy units and you can re-roll hit rolls of one for attacks made by units to those units. And then take it up where you can get it. One in four units in your army can be Duardin and they get the barrack through keyword. Okay, so what does that buy me? Well, really, you see potential options here where you could take Gotrek, for example, and you go, ooh, barrack thring keyword on Gotrek, maybe I can do something fancy with Gotrek. Like, oh, could I stick him in a sky vessel and drop him somewhere and have him cause all kinds of trouble? Unfortunately, they haven't decided to go down that road. I thought it would have been cool if they sort of said, well, you can take um, a Duardin unit and give it the Skyfarer's uh, trait, oh, sorry, keyword. That would have been cool so that they could actually fly around. That would have been nice, but no. They have decided to basically give you this footnote of Honor the Gods just in case. Once per battle at the start of your shooting phase or combat phase, you can pick a friendly Barrett unit and until the end of that phase, on modified hit rolls of six for attacks made by that unit, score two hits on the target instead of one. So basically, if you use, say, Gotrek, for example, then basically, you know, he gets an extra hit when he rolls six, which is also causing d6 wounds, which is actually pretty good, but it's only for one battle round, it's not all the time. So, Command and Trait is supremely stubborn. When you're using, um, this so is the Commander, when you're using incredibly stubborn ability this general, you can fight on a two plus, not a four. And then they've got a Grudge Hammer, which is basically add one to hit rolls for attacks made by that weapon. In addition, if the unmodified rule run for the attack made by that weapon, the targets an enemy unit was picked for the Chronicle of Grudges article is six, that attack inflicts D3. So, not bad. I think they could have just done a little bit more with those guys. It does let you, of course, though, take Duardin and one in four units. So if you want to have a Magma Droth, and uh, a bunch of other, you know, maybe some iron drakes or a bunch of um, gyrocopters and things like that. You can put more dwar Duardin in your army than you were able to do before based on the rules. Which I think could, from a casual play perspective, could give you some really characterful armies. Um, I just wish they'd just done a little bit like, say, one unit can train as a Skyfarer's for such and such a cost or something. Or oh, that's one of the abilities, because uh, that would have been really cool to basically, you know, stick stick Gotrek in a in a sky vessel, have him fly to the other end of the of the board, and basically, you know, get out and cause all kinds of mayhem. I think that would have been really excellent. So let's have a look at um, what our command traits actually are, and how they actually fit. So if we look at the, the admirals, they've all got kind of similar ones. You basically got wealthy, tough as old boots and grush bearer. So wealthy is basically you get more ether gold, tough as old boots, you get more wounds. Grudge bearer, after the armies are set up, you pick a hero and you double the damage. And then you've got the interesting ones. You've got Cunning Fleet Master, after armies are set up, if before the first battle round begins, you can make a normal move with a sky vessel and it can fly high. It can fly high unless it is in an Arcanaut ironclad. War wound, this is probably the best one. Who doesn't like command points? Roll a dice for this general in your hero phase. On a one, subtract one from hit rolls for this general until your next hero phase. On a two plus, you get a command point. That's fabulous, quite frankly. Scholar and an Archimart, you can pick an extra footnote for your army, but you cannot pick one that's already got. So there's some sort of standard footnotes and such. To be honest, the one you're going to pick there is going to be 
the war wounds, surely. So then if we actually have a look, who's next? The Endroneers, the Endrin Masters. So again, we've got Wealthy, Tough as Old Boots and Grudge Bearer again. So what are the interesting ones? We've got Grandmaster. When you use this General's Endrin Master ability, you add one to the number of wounds that you, uh, that you get to heal. Uh, okay. That means you you stick them in a Sky Vessel, means they can stick around a bit longer. Great Tinkerer, add two to the attacks characteristics of this general's Gaze of Grunny weapon. This, I think, is absolutely awesome, because the Gaze of Grunny is nasty as hell. It's got a range of nine inches. It's only one attack, but threes and twos with D3 damage and a minus one rend. And there is an artifact that you can put on the Endrin Master which gives that Gaze of Grunry 18 inch range. So just imagine, you sit outside a charge range, which is effectively 18 inches, and um, you basically can have a potential of causing nine wounds from 18 inches away on threes and twos. That's pretty good. I think that's well worth considering. And for 100 points, the Endrin Master's actually pretty, pretty handy. And um, that's good because he's in the start collecting set. And the way the rule changes have gone, the start collecting set, there's nothing in there that's bad. The gun hauler's good. Sky Warden's end raider riggers are good. Thunderers are excellent. And the Endrin Master's good. So now you've got a start collecting set where you look at and go, actually, I don't need to just buy that for the Thunderers and then sell the rest. I can actually make use of it. So. That's a really good thing, because often the guys who make the rules don't think about how the models might actually be sold. And one of the big problems I had with the Caradron was the start collecting set only really had maybe one unit in that you'd wanted. But the other thing was, if I wanted to run an Arkanoid unit, I was looking, I would go with all Skyhawks, right? Or, or sorry, all light Skyhawks. And you're like, well, there's only one in the in the kit, and there's only one volleyball in the kit, and one sky bike in the kit. So you have to go to like a bit store in order to buy lots of Skyhawks, and they're like seven or eight quid each. So it just wasn't good for collecting the army from a cost perspective, and you never want that. So that was the Endrin Master. Now moving on to Etheric Navigators. Now these fellas can basically do unbinding if they're in the um, Overlord's army, so actually a pretty good pick. Again, um, we've got a couple that are similar to everything else, but this guy's actually got four unique traits. He's got Stormcaller, when this channel uses his Aether Storm ability, he can reroll the dice. You've got Ride the Ring Winds, which you add three to the move characteristic of a Sky Vessel. You know, to be honest, I don't think that's actually that good, because the Sky Vessels can kind of go wherever they like with the Fly High ability. You've then got Skeptic, add one to the Dispelling and Unbinding rolls for this general. That's pretty handy. Diviner, the armies are set up. Pick one terrain feature for the objective and do not take battle shot tests for carriage normal units while they are wholly within 12 inches of that terrain feature or objective. That actually might have its place to play um, if you're in a capture objective scenario. That actually could be pretty handy. Um, but I think the best one there is probably Skeptic, though Stormcaller can cause all kinds of hassle if you're going against an army that's got Fly. Aether Chemists. Again, we've got Wealthy, Tough as on Boots, Grudge Bearer, a Nose for Gold. This is a good one. Roll a dice for this, gen uh, for this general in your hero phase. On a 5+, plus, they gain one share of Aether Gold. That's always nice, isn't it? Genius in the making. The range of this general's etheric augmentation is now 18 inches, not 12. Okay. If you're using them as a foot slugger, because they can't use those command abilities, those abilities they have when they're garrisoned, then, you know, that could be pretty useful. Collector. If you choose this general to have an artifact of power, then you can choose another friendly area to have the same artifact of power. Hmm. There should be some nice combos with that, don't you think? Arcanal Admiral. Now this fella... We're moving on to... Sorry, now we move on to Artifacts of Power. So let's have a look at what the, Arch uh, the old Admiral can get. Master Raw Armor. Basically, each time you allocate a wound, on a six, that wound is negated. 
So, okay. He's then got Hammer of Etheric Might, pick the, the melee weapon. If the unmodified hit roll is a six, then you get a mortal wound. Not bad, because they're fairly handy in hand to hand. Endless Repeater, basic Glastelson's Endless Repeater. You add two to the attack's characteristics of the Volley Pistol. Mm, not bad. Rune of Mark, after armies are set up, pick one enemy hero. If that hero is slain before the model is removed from play, you can give one share of Ether Gold to each of the three closest friendly Caradron Overlords units to that hero. That's interesting. Flask of Vintage Amber Whiskey, once per battle, in your hero phase, you can either heal up to D6 wounds allocated to the bearer or heal up to two wounds allocated to the bearer. So guaranteed two or D6. I could see that could be useful if you want him to stick around. But finally, we move on to the one that you're probably going to pick. And that's the Proclamator Mass Scaler. Once per battle round, this general can use a command ability on their war scroll without a command point being spent. That is some serious good artifacting so that to me would be the one that you would pick for your admiral and combine that with war wound that's some serious command ability um, producing which you know a command point heavy army really can do very well even if it is a little underpowered in comparison to its opposition Etheric Navigators, Cyclonic, Athermeter. When you use the Bearer's Aether Storm ability, you add one to the dice roll to determine its effect. Okay, not bad. Illuminator Flare Pistol. First time in battle, that Bearer's Ranging Pistol scores a hit on an enemy. You can re-roll hits. Not bad. Voidstone Orb. Now, this one, I think, would be useful. Once per battle, you can use the Bearer's Aetheric Aether Sight ability. You can say that the bearer will use their Voidstone Orb. If you do so, dispelling or unbinding is automatic. It's kind of like what um, a Night Encounter has. Endrin Masters. Right, now, with the Endrin Harness or with the Dirigible Suit, there's now two. You've now have got an Endrin Master who can wear a Dirigible Suit, so he's kind of like a souped up uh, Skyfarer model. And the Endrin Master, I think, has absolutely lovely combo. So, Cogmonculus. Once per phase, you can re-roll one hit or wound roll for attack made by the bearer, or re-roll one save roll. Aether Quartz Monolens. This is the one I really like, because it combos really well with improving um, your grungy attack. The bearer's gaze of grungy has a range of 18 instead of 19. This is the one I like. Seismic Shot Gauntlets. After the bearer makes a charge move, you can pick one enemy unit within one inch of the bearer and roll a dice on two plus that enemy unit summons D3 mortal wounds. Okay, it's a bit meh, but all right. Endry Master with Dirigible Suit. When the bearer retreats, they can use a disengage and fly high abilities. That's quite nice. Phosphorite Bomblets. Once per battle in your shooting phase, you can pick one unit within six inches of this model, roll a dice on a two plus, that model, that unit suffers one mortal wound, and you keep on rolling until you hit a one. If you get pretty lucky there, you could cause four or five mortal wounds, though on average you're probably going to do three or so, I would guess. Um, Zinch can be like that with dice. You then have Miniaturized Athematic Repulsion Field. Basically it gives you a three plus magic save. So not bad, not bad at all. Um, it would be nice if you could have the Aether Quartz Mono Lens on the Endrin Master, but with the dirigible suit, that would be super, super cool. So what about the Aether Chemist in terms of artifacts of power? What have we got? We got emergency vent plates. Once per battle at the start of the enemy shooting phase, you can say that the barrier will use their emergency vent plates. If you do, subtract one from hit rolls for attacks that target the bearer only for any unit within six. Doesn't say you can't use this in garrisoning, so it could be quite useful if you stick the fella inside a, a an Arcanet frigate or even a gun hauler with Colbeard's compartments, for example. Corsic Atomizer, once per battle at the start of the combat phase, you can say that the bearer will use the Corsic Atomizer. If you do, roll a dice for each enemy model within six. On a five plus, you get a mortal wound. Pretty handy. Game doesn't say you can't use it when garrisoned inside of a airship also, so could be pretty handy. Last one, probably my favorite. Pick an endless spell, any you can choose, 
You must pay the points required for the for the model. Once per battle, a bearer can automatically cast the endless spell and it can't be unbound. So you can guarantee the casting of, say, Everblaze Comet or the really nasty warp scaven warp fire you know, lightning which is probably the best endless spell in the game so i definitely look at that one and try and take uh warp fire lightning because uh, that could be really really nasty indeed um you're guaranteed to cast it it's a it's an eight nine to unbind it it might stick around for a couple of turns and it doesn't move. So, you know, you can actually just plonk it on top of the unit and just cause all kinds of havoc. Now we're on to sort of like, um, you know, the the sky ships and what, um, you know, great Endrin works they can have. The Ironclad pretty, really does have the best ones here, to be perfectly honest. Um, the last word is is the one that everybody used to go for, and I think that's probably the one everybody's going to go for now. End of the enemy charge phase, you can pick an enemy unit that finishes the charge move within three, and then you can shoot all you've got at them. You've then got all reliable hull plates, which gives you two additional wounds. Yeah. Um, a bill and buoyancy model can fly high and disengage even if it has a garrison of 16 or more models. That's... I could see people taking that one if you wanted to basically stack it with 20 models. Prudency shoots. If the model's destroyed, you don't have to see who rolls. Uh, garrison are slain. Magnificent armoscope. Bad two if the models move. Yeah. And then Zombicop, deal breaker, battering ram. After this model makes a charge move, you can pick one enemy unit within one inch of this model and roll the number of dice equal to the charge roll for the charge move. For each 4+, plus, the enemy unit suffers mortal wounds. Now, you don't have a lot of mortal wound generation in a um, Caradon Overlord's army, so that's, you know, not terrible. The frigate refittings are really disappointing, to be honest, and you've got a Magnificent Armor Scope, which adds two to the move, Prudency Shoots, which means, you know, if it blows up, then you don't have to roll for the, the, the chaps as they um, disembark, and then you've got Malefic Sky Mines, which is basically complete garbage, it's basically only good against a flyer, and um, on a two to three enemy unit suffers D3 mortal wounds, four plus the enemy unit suffers D6. It's pretty rubbish so if you're going to take a frigate um then you probably don't want to put a great ender work on it quite frankly unless that's ender work is breath of morgrim which is the one from baraka uh, baz gun hauler modifications you've got Ygrid Kaz, Surge Injection, Endrin Mark IV. When this model makes a normal move, you can add D3 to the move, and if you wish, you can add 2D3 to that move instead of D3. But if you do so, you will roll a double, and then that model suffers one more to wound after the move is made. Okay, but I don't think adding movement to the vessels really helps you a lot when they can fly high and kind of appear anywhere. Zombicorp, Death Setter, Spar Torpedo. Once per battle, if this model makes a charge, you can pick one enemy unit with one inch, two plus that unit suffers D6 mortal wounds. Not bad, not bad. If you're planning on using it as a battle room, battling ram, then great. Finally, Goldbeard's Collapsible Compartments, my favourite. This model can use the flying transport ability from the Arcanaut Ironclad War Scroll. If it does so, the maximum number of models it can garrison is five. It can always fly high or disengage no matter how many models are in its garrison. So basically, you can take that, stick five Grunstock Thunderers inside it, and you've basically got a really lethal gun hauler. Or you can put Thundrick and his Profiteers in there, and you've got a very lethal gun hauler also. And um, I think that's probably one I would definitely take. Scroll, okay. So War Scroll Battalions. Now, one of the things that I find quite frustrating is, outside of certain armies, there's a distinct lack of War Scroll Battalions that are actually, you could actually use. And the Caradron Overlords didn't really have any before that were really worthwhile taking. But now we've probably got three that are worthwhile taking there's one that's actually not listed here which is part of the aether war box set which is called intrepid prospectors which is basically an endrin master with a dirigible suit sky wardens endrin riggers and a gun hauler and 
you get yourself a War Scroll Battalion for 680 points. All the stuff there is pretty good. You would probably would take that if you're looking to build a 2,000 point army with a couple of War Scroll Battalions to give you the three Great Endrim Works and the three um, Artifacts and the three Calam Points, then, you know, I think it's worthwhile looking at that. So we've got, um, you know, the War Scroll Battalion of Grand Armadna, which is basically an Arcanaut Admiral or Brock, an Iron Sky Command and an Iron Sky Attack Squadron and one Grun Stock Exquel Wing. You're not really going to play that unless you've got an absolutely massive army. That's really for, like, a massive battalion. You've then got Iron Sky Command, which is an Ironclad, three units chosen from any of the combination of an Aether Chemist, a Theric Navigator and an Endrin Master, an Arcanaut Company and one to three Endrin Rigger units. Pretty handy. That's pretty good. I could see people taking that if they're enamoured with the Ironclad. For me, the Ironclad, 510 points. I'm not sure I want to I wanna, I wanna go for that. But again, that's you know fairly reasonable. There's nothing bad in that, certainly. Um, you would definitely take an Aether Chemist and an Etheric Navigator and an Endrin Master. Actually, I think for 100 points, it's actually a really, really good model. You know, got the Warsco Battalion of Iron Sky Attack Squadron. This is the one that you're going to see a lot in competitive play. I think um, this this is the really good one. I should probably mention what the Iron Sky Command actually gives you. Uh, you don't take battle shot text for friendly character and overlord units when they're wholly within 18 inches of the Ironclad. Not bad. Um, Iron Sky Attack Squadron. You get two Arcanaut frigates, an Arcanaut company for each, and the Arcanaut units from this battalion can leave the frigate from the same battalion either before or after it's moved and in addition they can then roll 3d6 instead of 2d6 making charge rolls so basically you can have this thing move and then dump its guys and they can go and do a legger and make it to uh, you know an objective and such so i can see people taking this um, frigates are good and uh, Arcanaut Company is actually pretty good at taking objectives, especially if they can, uh, you know, make a uh, make a charge like that. Then you've got a Grunstalk Escort Wing, which I think this is uh, this one's pretty good as well. You get you take two to three Grunstalk Gun Haulers, an Arcanaut Ironclad, or an Arcanaut Frigate, uh, one Grunstalk Thunderous units, and zero to three Sky Wardens units. And this is actually a pretty good one, I think. And at the start of your shooting phase, you can pick one enemy unit for the battalion to focus fire on. If you do so, you real well ones for attack. That's pretty good. I think that's a War Scroll battalion that people will be taking as well. So moving on to like the characters. I don't think Brock's changed an awful lot. He's the first one that's listed. Um, so, you know, I don't think um, there's, there's an awful lot to say there. He's still, um, you know, fairly hefty in, in a price perspective. I think he's two hundred and sixty points. Um, I'm not sure I would take him now that you've got the Endrin Master and Dirigible suit. Um, at two hundred and twenty points, this guy's pretty handy, uh, especially you know his Dirigible suit, weapon battery eighteen inches, attacks of six, threes and threes, minus one one damage. But this gaze of Grunny. 9 inches, uh, 1 attack, 3s and 2s, minus 1 d3 damage, you know. He's got an Aethermatic Saw, 3 attacks, 3s to hit, 2s to wound, minus 2 rend, d3 damage. I, I think he's pretty good. He's got 8 wounds, 8 bravery, 3 plus save, 12 inch move. For 220 points, I think he's, um, I think you'll see a lot of people take him as the general, especially when you can take him and actually make a... War Scroll Battalion out of uh, having him with the Intrepid Prospector's uh, War Scroll Battalion that's from the Aether Wars box set. And if you're looking at what that is, look at Battle Scribe, for example, on your phone, and you can pick out that. you got the Arcanaut Admiral. Really, if you're going to take the Arcanaut Admiral, you're going to take him because you like his command abilities. Master of the Skies, you can use command ability to start your shooting phase. You do so, put one friendly sky vessel as a model with his command ability in this garrison. And you can shoot in that phase even if it ran. On my mark fire, you can pick the ability at the start of your shooting phase. If you do so, pick one friendly sky vessel. You can re-roll hits of one. 
And then you've got Repel Borders. You can use kind of ability at the start of your combat phase. Pick one friendly Sky Vessel. Add one to hit rolls. That's pretty good. Up and Atom. You can use this kind of ability at the start of your charge phase. If you do so, pick one friendly Sky Fires unit within 12. You can reroll charge rolls. So you're going to take an Admiral really for taking those command abilities. So you're going to need to, you know, be looking at trying to take some command abilities. Then there's some nice, you know, traits um, that you can um, be taking, like uh, Loud Mask and Heather and things like that, um, that, that can basically generate uh, command abilities. But that's going to be the reason why you're taking an Arcanaut Admiral. He is 140 points, so you know. You're, you're paying for those command abilities, so better make sure if you take them that you do indeed use them. He's also got some abilities, like if you want a job done, you can re-roll hit and wound rolls of one um, if you attack a hero or a monster, and you've got protect the admiral, you know, so the sky Skyfarers basically can jump in and take his wounds. Etheric Navigator, so I think you'll see this fella taken quite a bit. He's 100 points. Um, he's got not got an awful lot to write home about, you know, um, you know, melee weapons rise or pistol wise. But he's uh, he's got a aether sight ability. This model can attempt to dispel um, endless spells at the start of the hero phase and attempt to unbind a, a spell. So, you know, if you're looking for keeping yourself true and not having to take an ally like a knight encounter or something then um, the Etheric Navigator is a pretty decent choice, I think. Um, that's probably the reason why you're going to take him. He's also got uh, an Aether Storm ability. In your hero phase, you can pick one enemy unit within 36 that is visible and can fly. On a 1 to 2, nothing happens. 3 to 4, halve the move. On a 6, halve the move. And D3, multiple wounds. So, you know, if you're going against a Flyer's uh, opponent, that's pretty handy. Read the wins. You can re-roll run and charge rolls with uh, friendly sky vessels that are visible to a friendly etheric navigator. That's pretty handy too. So, you know, they're, they're kind of useful. You know, he's got 4-inch move, 5 wounds, 3 plus save, 7 bravery. I think he's uh, they're pretty handy, etheric navigators. Endrin Masters. Originally, with the Endrin Master, you know, you get him in the start collecting box set. And I was like, oh, well, I'm not sure you'd really ever take him. But as you read through a bit, for 100 points, this fella is actually really quite good in melee. And if you give him the Aether Quartz Monolens and a uh, Great Tinkerer, then he'll have the Gaze of Grunier 18 inches with three attacks, and it's three pluses to hit, two to wound, minus one rend, d3 damage. That's pretty nasty. And his Aether Might Hammer is three attacks, threes to hit, threes to wound, minus one rend, d3 damage. But if the unmodified hit roll for attack made with a melee weapon is six, that attack inflicts three mortal wounds. So he's actually pretty handy, you know. You've uh, got a pretty decent chance with three attacks, of course, in, um, you know, three mortal wounds there. So he's pretty useful. And he's a command ability, you know, grung by Grungy Arm, my eye and you. You can use this command ability in your hero phase. And if a friendly Endrin Riggers use it with an 18, you basically can let them re-roll, basically. Uh, his ability as himself is... You can pick a friendly Sky Vessel within an inch and heal up to D3 wounds. So, that's pretty good. You know, if you've got him in your main Sky Vessel and basically he's um, healing wounds every turn to make it more durable. Only 4 plus save though, so 7 bravery. He's got 6 wounds though. I think for 100 points. The Endron Master with, um, you know, I think he's possibly got um, you know, some of the best, you know, uh, artifact choices and um, ability, uh, sorry, trait that you can take, you know, outside of the Admiral. Um, so yeah, I think he's actually a not, not a bad choice at all. We then got the Aether Chemist. Now they've nerfed the Aether Chemist quite considerably. He's changed quite a bit. So it used to be that um, the Aether Chemist would enhance a weapon type of a... Um, a given unit. So what people would do is they would basically take um, a huge unit of 40 Arcanauts with 12 Skyhawks and then stick an Aether Chemist with them 
and give those Skyhawks an extra shot. So you would have 24 Skyhawk shots, which I think were hitting on fours, wounding on threes, minus one Ren D3 damage. So they, you know, that was pretty good. And they had a 24 inch range. So they've taken a bit of a nerf in this, actually. So the whole way you used to play the Caradron Overlords with like that big Arcanaut unit isn't quite so valid anymore. So they've nerfed the Ether Chemist. And so basically now you bet a 12 inch uh, range ability and you can re-roll um, rolls of um, one for attacks. So not as good as he used to be. He's still got atmospheric isolation, which is subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made by enemy that are within three. You can't use that when he's part of a garrison, sadly. He's got atmospheric atomizer, which is actually really good. Um, so 3d6 attacks, 4s and 4s, range of 9, minus 2 rend. So that if you were to stick, say, 3 ether, chemi ether chemists in a gun hauler, get it, and, um, you know, with Colbeard's compartments, you basically have 9d6 shots. It's an infantry mower, especially at, min and at minus 2 rend. You can, can cause some serious uh, damage with that and have some uh, have quite a bit of fun. So the eighth of chemist I think is still a, is a good buy at ninety points, um, especially if he's got speller in a bottle. Um, so I think you you should be looking at taking an eighth of chemist. He's, your, he's the cheapest hero that we can take. You don't have the Arcanaut Company, and this has taken a bit of a nerf. So the Privateer Pistol's now got a range of 9. I think it had a range of 12 previously. The Aethomatic Volagun has now got a range of 12. I think it had 18. The Skyhawk has a range of 18, and it used to have a range of 24. So it's had taken a bit of a... They've taken a bit of a nerf. But um, they are cheaper now. This is... A, they are 90, 90 points. They now have a 4 plus save, uh, not not a 5 plus. So, you know, they, they have given you some... You know some things to to make up for the loss, shall we say? Um, you know the, the stat profile has not really changed for the rest of it. Um, the automatic volley gun is fives to hit, fours to wound. I think that's what it was. A minus one rend. Light skyhawk is fours and threes minus two d three. So I think that hasn't changed. Uh, the privateer pistol is fours and fours, and you get two attacks. Obviously, you get a company captain. Um, the their ability, their glory seeker ability, has changed as well. It used to be they gain, they kind of got like um, double hits or double attacks against uh, heroes and monsters. They've changed that now. You can now re-roll battle shot tests for this unit if it's wholly within nine inches of an objective, and you can add one to hit rolls for attacks when it's within nine of objective. And um, you can't use that if it's part of a garrison. So you know they've changed them quite a bit. So you no longer can take um you know three skyhooks or three uh thematic volley guns like you used to so basically now one in every ten models can basically replace um their volley gun with a so replace the private pistol with a volley gun and a gumbo and a sky like skyhook and a gumbo or a sky pike so previously it could be um you know three uh, models now the good news about that is that is a nerf in the sense that okay now they're not as good as they used to be but they've now brought this a bit more in line in terms of how you actually buy these models because the Arcanaut company set only includes one of each of those weapon types so you know you were buying the Arcanaut company and then like you had to spend almost the same amount again to buy two additional, you know, Skyhawks, or if you're running the volley guns, two additional volley guns. So, you know, it was it was getting making it expensive to actually run it. How a lot of people were running it. So this nerve kind of brings it in line with what you actually are able to buy, and I always think of that as quite a good thing. In that, you know somebody the rule makers and the people and the model makers are actually thinking together um so that you know you don't bankrupt your customer we then have bjorgen thundrick he's um from the shade spire game basically he's an aether chemist he's um got slightly better heavy um melee weapons he's got three attacks with heavy instruments not two um, he's a 4 inch move, 4 save, 7 bravery, 5 wounds. His uh, ability is in the hero files you can pick one square for his unit and part of a garrison until your next hero files you can re-roll hit rolls of 1. 
So he's hit, and I think a regular Aether Chemist, if I'm right, is Wounds, right? You can, if until your next hero phase, you can reroll wound rolls. Yes, that's right. So an Aether Chemist is wound rolls, and Thundric is hit rolls. So as a combo, the two together, it's uh, interesting. Um, so Thundr Bjorgen and his four dudes that accompany him is 140 points. So the question is, is he's kind of slightly better than uh, a normal Aether Chemist, but obviously you can't stick a, an artifact with him because he's a named character. So the question is, is you know, is 50 points worthwhile to get the four dudes that you know accompany that can accompany him? Well, these four guys basically are actually pretty good. You know, you've got um, Sky Warden, who is pretty handy in melee. You've got um, a little bonus, whereas if they're close to Thundric, then they basically get plus one to hit. So that's pretty good. You've got um, a Thunderer in here, uh, Grunstock Thunderer. Deadeye Lund, who's basically got the captain's rifle, so he's got four shots at about 18 inches. Uh, threes to hit, fours to wound, so he's um, he's not as good as a standard one, Stock Thunderer, actually, which I think is threes and threes now, isn't it? So let's just have a look. Where are the Grand Stock Thunderers? There they are. Are they threes and threes? No, they're threes and fours. Oh, okay. Oh. They used to be threes and threes, I thought. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is it doesn't look like they've remembered to change the rules around Thundrix Profiteers because the Privateer Pistol's got a range of 12 inches, not 9, and the Ithematic Volley Gun's got a range of 18 inches. So it doesn't look as though they got around to actually changing that. So you actually get slightly better Arcanauts in this, in this group. So I actually happen to think that these guys are worthwhile taking. I think Thundric and his profiteers are worthwhile taking and dropping um, into a gun hauler with Colbert's compartments. I actually think they're worthwhile taking. And a lot of the Shade Spire stuff isn't, but I think these guys are. You then have the Ironclad, the, this is, um, you know, changed quite a bit, um, you know, with the, with the Fly High ability, you know, the Overlords now really play like they should. So basically, instead of making a normal move with this model, if there are less than seven wounds currently allocated to this model, you can say that it will fly high. You can retreat and then disengage. If you do so, remove this model from the battlefield and set up again more than one inches from a terrain and more than nine inches from any enemy models. You can garrison 25 um, models in the, uh, in the ironclad and you have to halve the move characteristics if they're 16 or more in this thing. So that's the reason why, so that great Endrim work um, that you can get that enables it to basically not suffer any problems with greater than 16 is actually pretty handy. It's got a bomb racks, it can uh, disengage, it's got a great sky cannon, you can use a shrapnel shell or, sh or, uh, or such. So I think the sky cannon is probably a better option because you've got shrapnel attacks, which is six attacks in threes and threes minus one when two damage. You've got the great sky cannon shell if you want to take out something nasty. 30 inch range, one attack, threes and twos, minus two rend, six damage. You've got, um, so I think really you should be taking the great sky cannon. You've also got the great sky hook, 24 inches, one attack, threes, twos, minus two, six damage. So for me, the sky, the sky cannon's better because it's a bit more versatile. You could also take a great volley cannon which is 18 inches 4d6 threes threes minus one one i don't think you're going to be taking that it's great sky cannon all day you've got um after aether shot torpedoes which you can use as well um they've got four attacks fours and threes minus one d3 damage and aether shot carbines as well 12 inch range eight of those threes threes minus one two 
and you've got you know boarding weapons which is a, a certain number of attacks depending on the brackets so it does bracket um but the bracketing doesn't um affect its ability to shoot it just affects its boarding weapons and um you know the bomb racks so it's a pretty handy unit it's three saves 18 wounds it normally moves 10 8 bravery it's good I think a lot of people are going to be taking the ironclad 510 points though it's a bit steep um, I actually think that perhaps two frigates at two, and frigates are 250 two frigates might be a better choice so Arcanaut frigates and this, this basically can take um, 15 models um, if it's above 11 you have the movement it's got bomb racks as well it's got the disengage and fly high rule you've got um, heavy sky hook as well you can take all the heavy sky cannon so the sky heavy sky cannon 20 points range d6 attacks not six attacks which I think is what the ironclad actually gets is that right yes that's right so it's a more reliable weapon that's three threes minus one two damage you've then got the shell which is 30 inches ones threes twos minus twos d6 damage so the ironclad is actually six damage and then you've got Ace of Shot Carbines, so you've got 12 inch range, uh, 4 attacks, 3 is 3 is minus 1, 2. So, you know, it's um, not as heavy hitting as the Ironclad. Um, 14 wounds, 4 plus save, 8 bravery. Um, not quite as good a, a save as well. So they've done quite a good job at making it a, a, a stiff choice where you can sort of say, hmm, you know, a couple of frigates or a couple of Ironclads. Um, the Ironclads probably. You know, one on one is going to cause uh, more damage, but I think the flexibility of having a couple of frigates is probably a better choice. Now, the gun aura, these are now 150 points. Now, the interesting thing about the gun aura is it doesn't get bracketed. It's got 10 wounds, 4 save, 12 inch move, 7 bravery. It's got the sky cannon, but it's only got 18 inches, not 24. D6 attacks, 3 is 3 is minus 1 and 2 damage. And you've got the shell option, which is 24 inches. You could also take a drill cannon, which is 36 inches, 1 is 3 is 3 is minus 3 is D3. And it's got 8th shot carbines, but it's only got a couple of them. Again, you know, it's got the disengage, fly high roll, um, and that kind of thing. It's got an escort vessel, so roll a dice. Each time you allocate a wound to a friendly sky vessel other than a gun hauler, um, if it's within three inches of a gun hauler on a six, that mortal wound is negated. Um, you know, so they're quite good, you know, tool to protect your ironclad or protect your frigates. I think um, one of the nice things as well about the gun haulers as well is you take Urbaz as your city, you can take them as battle line. So that's actually quite handy. Um, you don't have to be scratching around trying to figure out how you do that, which is, you know, basically taking Arcanaut company typically. Then you've got the Grunstock Thunderers. They, they've changed these quite a bit. Um, they've now got two wounds, uh, four plus save. Um, they Aether Shot Rifles, uh, 18 inch range, two attacks, uh, threes, fours, minus one, one. The, the dude who leads them has a double barrel Aether Shot Rifle. Four attacks, threes, fours, minus one, one. And then you've got their other choices of weapons. Now they've massively simplified how this works as well. So they've now, if you, if you basically take all of the choices, which is a deck sweeper, an aether cannon, and a mortar, you basically get one to hit rolls for attacks made by each of those weapons. But you can't do that if it's in a garrison. Also, you know, the deck sweeper, Four attacks, fours and fours, minus one, one, uh, but it's only got a range of 12, unlike the um, Aether Shot Rifle, which is 18. Aether Cannon's the same, 12, a range of 12, fours and twos, minus two, d3. Grunt Stop Mortar, again, fours, threes, d3, but again, 12 inch range. So it's, it's a real balance as to what you decide to take. If you want to get a bit more up close and personal, or do you want to snipe? Because 18 inches for me, if they're garrisoned in, say, a frigate, for example, or an ironclad, they can cause quite a bit of damage, and they are pretty much out of charge range. So they can basically just snipe away and stay 
out of the way of most folks and the garrisoning ability inside the ships is really powerful because it's minus one to hit the guys inside but also plus one to save so um it's a really really good ability and it's good that they've balanced that out by not allowing certain abilities to work when they're garrisoned They've also got this drive them back ability to add one to the attacks characteristic of missile weapons used by this unit while any enemy units are within three. Again, that can't be used when they're garrisoning. So if they get charged and they're in the shooting phase, then they get an additional shot. Pretty good. They get an honor bearer, one in every five can be honor bearer to reroll battle shock. Gunnery sergeant, one model in this unit can be a gunnery sergeant, and basically he gets a double barrel either shot rifle. But he can also get a drill bill as well. Drill bills are actually pretty good, you know, range of three inches, D3 attacks, fours and fours, minus one, and uh, one damage. Actually pretty handy to have in the uh, melee, to be honest. So, the Thunder is 120 points. I think overall, if you take them straight with the Aether shot rifles, I think they're, a, they're an improvement over what they were previously because they've got that additional wound. Um, so I think then that um, drive them back ability, pretty good. Pin them, shred them and finish them just makes it easier to remember what it is you're doing. Um, you know, previously it was like you had to hit with the deck sweeper first, then hit with something else, then hit with something else. Oh, it was, yeah, it was complicated. Enron Riggers. Maybe 12, couple of wounds. I think these are 100 points. And uh, so Endrin Riggers, Sky Wardens are both 100 points each. Difference between Endrin Riggers and Sky Wardens is Endrin Riggers have got Endrin Craft, which basically means that they can heal Sky Vessels, and um, Sky Wardens have basically got bombs when they actually leave um, combat. And so they're, they're quite similar. Um, they do, they can be fairly decent in melee. So, you know, an Aethematic Saw is uh, pretty handy. It's uh, threes. Two's to wound, minus two rend, D3 damage, but it's only one attack, that's the only thing. Um, so you've got choices here in terms of weapons. The Aethermatic Volley Gun is really excellent because it's got a range of 24. Six attacks, fours and fours, minus one, one damage. Um, I think a set of Endrin Riggers used as a sniping unit with an Aethermatic Volley Gun and a Drill Launcher, I think are uh, pretty nasty. A Drill Launcher is one attack, Fours to hit, threes to wound, minus three rend, D3 damage. So pretty nasty. And you've got a grapnel launcher or a skyhook. And is a 24 inches, one attack, fours, threes, minus two, three damage. So that's actually not bad as well. The skyhook also gives you a little advantage. They're used to pull the bearer towards the foal. So you add one to charge rolls for this unit if it's got a skyhook. Okay, that's pretty good. They can hitch onto sky vessels and fly high with them. You've got a grapnel launcher. Units can't retreat if they're in three inches of a unit armed with a grapnel launcher. So it just depends on how you're going to play these guys. I think I'll play them probably as in the sniper sort of profile with the volley gun and the, uh, the drill launcher, I think. Um, though admittedly, it is kind of tempting to take the Skyhook um, at fours, threes, minus two, three damage. That guaranteed damage is um, quite attractive. Anyway, so it, it's, um, it gives you sort of a conundrum, and that's a good thing. You know, when it's a balanced thing like this, uh, giving you a conundrum is a good thing as far as I'm concerned. The rapid fire rivet gun, you know, that's got a 12 inch range, um, three attacks at threes, fours, minus one, one. That's not, that's pretty handy as well. So the ending riggers, you know, they're, they're pretty good. So the difference between them and Sky Wardens, Sky Wardens basically you have the same weapon choices, but um, they don't have as good a stock pistol. They've got a vulcanizer pistol, two attacks, threes, threes, minus one, one. So they're not quite as good in that in because there's the rivet gun, but they've got this um, sky mines ability. So if an enemy unit that can fly ends a charge move within one, and then you can roll one dice for each model, and each six you get a model wound, and then you've got time charges as well. Roll one dice for each enemy unit that's within three of this unit immediately 
before this unit makes a retreat on a four that unit being roll four suffers d3 mortal wounds so these guys can actually cause some mortal wounds um if you are interested in getting them in into melee they've got uh, they can again they can take a similar sort of choice set um one in every three models can take a volley gun one in every three models can take a drill launcher um their melee weapon is a sky pike um range of two two attacks fours threes minus one d3 actually probably a little bit better than the automatic sword perfectly honest um these, these guys are, are pretty good. I mean, the drill launcher ability, it's probably something I mentioned. If the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with a drill launcher is sick, you get three mortal wounds. So I think the drill launcher is actually a pretty pretty decent choice. And I think if you take uh, one of the sky ports um, with these guys, I think it's a dar, right now. Um, then basically you can make these guys you know, really pretty good in melee and you really do lack melee, a melee punch uh, with uh, Courage and Overlords Army. So just have a you know, quick scan of the old um, battle profiles. I mentioned the, the, the price of these things before and um, I, didn't get, uh, I didn't get any of it wrong, I don't think. How much is Brock Grunson now? Oh, he's 240, he's not 260. I think I made a mistake there. Um, there's some interesting notes here. So basically, if you take Barracks Infant, then the Arcanaut Frigate is battle line. So that's interesting because if you take that uh, War Scroll Battalion with the two frigates and the two Arcanaut companies, then you've met your battle line requirements straight away. Um, also, the interesting thing as well about the Thunderix Profiteers is, is it's unique. These units must be taken as a set, although taken as a set, each is a separate unit. So. Bjorgen doesn't need to be with the Profiteers. You could stick him somewhere else. So that's uh, kind of interesting also. Um, Endrin Rig is a battle line if your general is the, Erin, is the Endrin Master with the Dirigible Suit. So this is nice. This is giving you some flexibility here in terms of what you do. So if you take that, you know, uh, those uh, Profiteers um, Wasp Girl Battalion from the the War box set, then basically, you know, you can cover your battle line requirements uh, quite uh, with um, you get two of your battle line requirements with the Sky Wardens and Endrin Riggers that you have to take in part of that War Scroll. So that's pretty good. The Gun Hall itself, that can be battle line if you take Baroque Urbaz. That's very nice. The Grunstock Thunderers, they're battle line if you take Barret Nar. So that's always nice to see. Um, there I think uh, is looking at those sorts of things where it gives you additional flexibility for your battle line um, so you don't feel like you're just taking some or um, some filler in order to fill your battle line requirements. The cost of the War Scroll Battalions you got 90 for the Grand Armata, 140 for the Grunstock Escort Wing that's a little bit disappointing that's a bit steep to be honest the Iron Sky Attack run is 120 and the Iron Sky Command is 130. So I guess those are sorts of getting on for the going rates of War Scroll Battalions. I mean, you are getting a, an artifact, a great end rim work, and a command point for that, I suppose. So there we go. That's where we are. So what do I think overall? Well, it's a significant change uh, at the end of the day. I think... Um, it's made the Caradron Overlords match how you might be able to purchase them, which is I think is always a good thing. So now that Start Collecting set, which has got a Gun Hauler in it, five Grunstock Thunderers and, and uh, Endrin Master and some Endrin Riggers, is worth, collect is worth picking up because you're probably going to run all of those. Even the Endrin Master, I think a lot of people will take him. He's a, for 100 points. He's very handy. He's a good melee guy, um, and his ability is good too. So, uh, and um, you know, Thunderers are excellent, and um, Endrin Riggers or Sky Wardens it can be very good also. And the Gun Hauler is uh, good, especially if you take Colbert's compartments and you stick five dudes in it. So that's really nice to see, you know. You know, also the alignment as well for the Arcanaut Company as well. You know, that now is in line with how you buy them and these I, I honestly think that's always a good thing and plus now the scale the clown cars are worth taking 
you know, previously it was kind of like, well, they're a bit meh. You might take something just to annoy an opponent or whatever. If you're playing Zilfin, you would might you might take something, um, you know, because of that ability. But now that they can fly high and just kind of appear places and just shoot stuff up and they move well, and I think you know these guys now are as they are supposed to be. You know, they can fly around and um, shoot guns and cause people all kinds of uh, problems and and nick objectives so they're not going to wipe um opponents out in hand-to-hand -hand combat but they are going to pepper them with shot and steal objectives so i think you know they are now more competitive than they were and definitely more in keeping with how they really should play and that's only only a good thing um they are absolutely fantastic models as well i really like them i like playing dwarfs in general anyway I like play and I like fire slayers too. Um, I wish they'd done a little bit, um, slightly different rules for Barrack Thring with other um, Duardin. Maybe um, just make it so that you could train perhaps a unit as Skyfarers, so that you could stick maybe you know ten Volkite Berserkers or ten Hearthguard Berserkers in a in Ironclad drop them somewhere and just you know watch them wreak havoc i thought that would be most amusing uh, obviously you pay some sort of points cost for that or whatever but um but no i like this and the you know, artifacts and the traits and the more combos that you can do with them are kind of interesting there's some that's a bit meh but there's some that's good and um obviously you've got to figure out what that is and you know that's the beauty of building these kinds of lists and playing um this game at the end of the day is that those kinds of intrigues and the balance and I think they've done a pretty good job of it and uh, like I said the thing they probably should be most praised for with this is it makes what they're selling match the army so you don't have to go to a bits company to buy bits or just buy a start collecting set and strip out the bits you need and sell pretty much all the rest you know 70 percent of it you don't need to do that anymore you can now actually you know build an army based uh, around a couple of start collecting sets and a frigate or an ironclad um which is great you know means you uh, can get yourself a character and overlord's army without really breaking the bank or having to do really irritating things you know like buy bits on ebay for extortionate prices so anyway, i hope you enjoyed that it's probably the longest video i've i've done in a in a long time and uh if you do like it then please like please subscribe i will be doing more and i will catch you next time